So today I will talk, as I said, about budgeting, uh, what you need to think about when you're budgeting a DHIS2 project, why it is important, the key areas that you need to think about when to, that requires funding, and a bit of a checklist of what you should look for in a budget, and an exercise at the end. So why is this budgeting process important? Sometimes it can seem a bit sort of, oh, it's the financial department, they should do that, right? It's, I'm a technical person, I shouldn't think about money. But it's really important. So it's one of my favorite budgeting pictures here. You know, your clients, your Ministry of Health, they want these uh, super nice uh, skyscrapers, but they give you money to put like two pieces of corn with a toothpick instead. That's what you have money for. So doing a good budgeting uh, exercise, it, it sort of sets expectations for the project because when you know what kind of money is on the table, if you are good at budgeting, you can also say that this money will take you this far. So don't expect us to deliver this super advanced thing in every health facility in all of the country, data entry real time. If you give me enough money to buy five computers and hire one person 20%, it will not work. So a good budgeting process is important to ensure that the available resources are spent at the appropriate domains in your system. So it's not just to say that you have X amount of dollars for your project, but also you say a little bit about, we will spend half of it on this and 25% of it on this and 25% of it on this. So it forces you to plan a bit more because you're allocating resources. Um, and as I say, it sets the scope and expectation of the project. You can have some minimized, as we call them in Norway, or you can have a skyscraper. Um, doing a budget also uh, should ensure that you have money for a maintenance phase or for a long-term phase. So having the money on the table or a good budget in place, it will show that you don't just need funding for year one. It doesn't help that somebody says, oh, here is $100,000, go ahead. And it sounds like the project is a success. Because if you can show in a good budget that you will need money also for year two and three and four and five, it ensures that you have a more sustainable um, project. If you don't have an idea whether funding will be available in year two, three, four, and five, maybe you shouldn't start because it will be a waste of money. That money for year one could maybe be used for something more useful. So who should do the budgeting work for DHIS2 and how should it be done? So it depends, of course, on the country, the capacity, um, but the, the, the goal is that the country teams should do as much of this budgeting work as possible. Um, I mean, I am capable of making a DHIS2 budget and my colleagues are, so many people can make a good budget, but it really should be the country team that does it. So um, uh, HISP-UIO, like the global DHIS2 team or the HISP network, they can absolutely help you to guide you in the process or help you to review what you have done. We're happy to do that. We do that all the time. Uh, but it should be led by the country in the ministry, ideally. Also, uh, you should plan for some technical assistance for supervision and quality assurance uh, in this process. And we also have some tools available that you can use that we will link to in uh, Moodle afterwards. Some Excel templates that can be useful with the key categories, etc. We showed this picture yesterday. I hope you remember this, the foundational domains of DHIS2. I will not spend time on the details of it again. Um, but this is just to show that all the things on the bottom line here, the foundational areas, they also need some money. And having this good one plan with a proper budget, it's, it will also help you to get your work funded and to al align the different people who will chip in. It can be different donors. It can be different departments in the ministry. It doesn't have to be outside money. It can also be within government money, but to align around one plan. So some key sort of categories or areas that need some funding that you need to think about when you're making your budget is firstly, local personnel costs. So this is your core team. They need to get paid somehow. So you need to think about what does it cost to pay the salary of um, person A, B, C, and D that will take care of your DHS2 system over time. 
So they don't only need to get paid, but they also need some money to build their capacity to maybe be sent to academies like this, and maybe a more technical academy to learn, etc. You need to budget for some technical assistance costs. So that is typically uh, costs uh, uh, associated with having the HISP groups or other external consultants that know DHIS too well to have them come and, and help you out, especially in the beginning. And then there is a big cost, uh, a chunk of money that is local operational costs. So that is everything that costs money in your country. So buying devices, paying for internet, making sure your end users are trained, paying the bill to the hosting company, et cetera. So you could say maybe in the beginning of a DHIS2 project, it's really this uh, DHIS2 strengthening the core team. It's a big cost. You need to invest in that. Um, and overall, and I'll get back to that, you can also see if you are doing a couple of budget examples, you will see that um, the cost of end user training and devices are really what drives it up. It's a very big difference doing a project with uh, data entry at 10 district offices versus in a country where you're doing facility data entry at 5,000 clinics because you have to train those 5,000 clinics and you have to buy them devices and you have to pay their internet every month. So everybody remember this ship that got stuck? <laughs> so this big ship is your 20 years of public health data in their program silos. So you know, sometimes somebody comes and says, ah, I have $20,000, this will help you. So yeah, <laughs> maybe it won't really help you. So having a good budget will illustrate how far you can go with your money. A colleague of mine sent me this, I thought it was a bit funny. So some general budgeting considerations. So depending on the state of your core team or the maturity of the country, your nature of assistance from the outside will change. So you can sort of think that you have your core team skills starting very small in the beginning. It's all new, everybody's new to this. They don't know what to do. So you will need a lot of outside help. But then as your team's expertise grows over the years, you will need less and less help from the outside. Another thing to remember in terms of budgeting is that most of the costs in your budget are what we call recurring costs. This means that it's costs that will not be paid once, but it will come again and again and again and again. So for example, um, if your project requires infrastructure, it requires that you buy 1000 tablets, for example, to support health workers to collect data. You could say maybe on average 20 to 25% of those tablets needs to be replaced every year. This is because a tablet does not last forever. They get broken, people lose them in the river when they are crossing somewhere, somebody steals it, takes it home, you lose the charger. So it's not like you have bought your 1000 tablets and you are finished. So next year, you have to have in your budget that you need to buy 250 new tablets or two, yeah. Depends, the, the number isn't exact, but you get the picture right. You need to pay for, for things again and again. Same with repair, maintenance, hosting. You need to pay that hosting bill every year or every month. Connectivity, you need to pay that every month, etc. I think I covered this, so I will skip this one. So for the core team, what do you need to think about for budgeting for the core team? You need salary. You need salaries. People need to get paid. Sometimes we see core teams in countries where you, you speak to them and you ask, oh, what is your biggest challenge? It's like, yeah, I don't really have a paid job. I'm here because I think it's very interesting or it's a volunteer position. That's not good. So you need to make sure they have salaries. Um, set aside some money for them to go to academies like this to build their network and to build their skills and also some regional visits from, from the HISP groups, some TA days. In some countries, and I, I don't know this region enough, so I'm not sure if this is, the, this is the same, but we have this saying that sometimes you need to create some stickiness in the core team. We want core teams that stay for a while. Um, sometimes you see that government positions are not very well paid. 
So think about, are there ways that you can incentivize your core team to, to stay on for, for several years to build that, uh, build that capacity? It can be maybe some scholarships. It can be some contribution to have them get some education. Uh, again, sending them to academies, et cetera. Various options. It's different from country to country. So I won't say what you should do, but think about it. The last thing I will just discuss now is some things that you need to uh, think about when you're building your budget. There are some hidden things that you don't necessarily think about. Have you set aside time for orientation meetings, gathering people to start it? You need to rent your venues. You need to buy your coffee and tea. Um, is there time for requirement gathering, visiting clinics to understand what are their problems, having users travel to your ministry, for example, time for DHIS2 configuration and testing, and of course, training and refresher training. I want to say a little bit about tracker or individual level data collection. Overall, this is much more expensive than doing aggregate data collection. And I guess you can think why. Why is that more expensive? Anyone? Why is it more expensive to do individual level data collection than to collect aggregated data? It's more personnel, more training, more infrastructure. Exactly. More personnel, more devices, more training. And also, if you are building a tracker program, so if I want to build um, an immunization registry in my country, I want to track every child that gets vaccinated. This is something that is really part of the health workers work process. So doing an aggregate form, you can relatively easily do from the, the capital, the, the Ministry of Health. You have a form looking like this and you just build it. But if you're building a tool that a nurse will use every day in the clinic, you know, in their everyday work practice, you need to set aside time to understand that work practice because you don't want to introduce a tool that breaks their day. I guess if you want to, you can talk to Palestine team. They know how to make systems that will be for health workers, right? You have to speak to them, spend time with them and get their feedback. And also set aside time so that it's field tested in realistic settings. You build something, you budget for time to take and try it out in the clinic for a month. Sit with them for some weeks, understand, is it working? Go back, readjust. I think I covered this. So we have a tool, a budget tool uh, that we will upload on the Moodle platform. We will have an exercise just now in the next couple of minutes. Are you ready, Vito, to hand out some stuff? <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> sorry. Um, we will give you a very simplified version of this tool now for the exercise, but we have a more advanced tool on our on our pages that you can also review. But for the sake of the exercise now, which I just cut it down a bit. So again, to summarize, budgeting DHIS2 implementations, it's important to establish the scope of the project, ensure that you have resources over time. Using the maturity profile can help you to identify areas that need more money. You need to budget for core team, technical assistance, and local operational costs. Most costs are reoccurring, recurring. They come again and again. And you need to budget for the foundational domains. And tracker is more expensive than aggregates. So now we will have a short exercise. It Maybe it will feel like you are back in math class in primary school. So it's a little case describing a country, fictional country, and their implementation. So it's one page with a case, and there is two budget sheets. The first budget sheet is budgeting for year one, and the second budget sheet is budgeting for year two. So year one and year two. So there are some dark, um, um, can you give me an example of, the, of, the budget, of a budget sheet? So it looks a little bit like this, but it's a simplified version. I just want to show you that on the, on the paper that you will be handed out, there are some dark yellow fields. This is where you can add your numbers, okay? Yeah, not this one. 
this way. Okay. Thank you. If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Doesn't matter for me if you get like a 100% correct answer, but it's for you to think and read the case. Okay. We have uh, 40 minutes for this exercise. Yeah, you all have this, uh, this paper here very soon. This is the budget you want, I want you to write in. If you are not very good in math in your head, you might need the, the, the um, is it called calculator in English? Calculator, yeah. <laughs> you might need your calculator on your phone to make some uh, multiplications. Okay, good luck. I think I will slowly try to go through how I have been thinking in this exercise now. Was it difficult? It was okay, yeah, good. It's not complicated math, but it's sort of thinking through your implementation. How many people should we train? How many devices do we need, etc. So first thing I want to say is that there is not 100% a clear answer here. So we might have some different numbers, but I will try to explain how I have been thinking. Is it easy to see or is it too difficult to see? I will try to zoom, hold on. Better? Okay. So let's take the easy numbers first. We know, for example, that the people in the core team should have one training each. That's easy. We know that they say they need 60, day, 60 days of TA from the HISP groups. That's also easy number. That's here. But then training of the end users. How many, who did you think you have to train? It's a new data set. The health facilities have not seen this, health, uh, this data set before. Yes? We did have the question and we went to your team and they told, told us that they don't train the paper base. So we did half of the health facilities. And I asked them about the paper base. Okay. <laughs> so they don't. So we do have the half of the number of the health centers and That's the full fine. number of the hospitals and the district. Okay. That's fine. There are many answers to this. You have to think in your implementation, how well uh, trained are the staff in the facilities? Will it be for them to just have a new data set or is it fine? So here in this example, I said that everybody should get trained because it's a new data set, but we could debate that if that is correct. Maybe you would put in that only the people who are starting to use DHIS2 use the technology will get trained. There's no right or wrong answer, but, but you had the discussion, which is good, okay? The server rent, I think that's an easy question. Uh, For, yes? One question. You said that the hospitals is 37, and in your high, you're saying two hospitals per district, right? Oh, oh God, I'm sorry. Yeah, that is actually very correct. Okay, yeah, thank you. correct, correct. This one's too quick. 74, let me just write 74. That is absolutely correct, which means now I haven't done this properly with formulas, so <laughs> it won't reflect. <laughs> but for devices, you would need devices for 50% of the health facilities because the hospitals have devices and the district office have devices. So you need to buy devices for the 50% of the health facilities. Now the end numbers here will be wrong because I miscalculated. So don't think about that. I will talk how I think. For connectivity, you have to budget for connectivity also for district office, also for hospital and health facility. But maybe in your country, you know that the, the internet in the hospital, it's covered by another department. Someone else is paying for that. I don't need to budget for that. Again, it's up to you and your country. So 
In this example, I say we have to pay for internet for hospitals and district offices, but maybe it's not the same in your country. For supervision visits, I budgeted here that every health facility and hospital should get a supervision visit. And the reason for that is that if it's a new data set, we all saw yesterday how difficult it was to add, get the data quality right. So I'm thinking every health facility, they might need some help, not just the ones using DHIS2, because you are just as dependent on good data quality coming from the paper-based facilities. Again, there is no correct answer or wrong answer here, but think about it. It's not just the people using the technology that needs help with health data. It's also the ones writing on paper. Okay. If we go to the maintenance budget, of course, now it's less, less uh, users that need training. There was a percentage, so you don't need to train everybody on year two, but you need to train some because some people will, uh, some people will retire, they're getting older, they are, some people will quit their jobs, you have some new hires, and these people, they never got trained in year one, so you have to think they have to get trained as well when they join. So it's good to budget for some retraining. The 10% number is just what the ministry in this uh, La La Land estimated that their turnover of health staff is. This may be different in your country. Maybe your country has very high turnover of health staff or it's very stable. But in any case, it's good to plan for some sort of retraining because people, we all forget what we learned last year. Maybe we, we forget a little bit. The core team, they still need training. There are a lot of skills they need to learn. So it's not like if you train them a little bit in year one, they are finished. Maybe the team would like to expand. So in year one, they do aggregate. Now the ministry is saying, we want to integrate with these five systems in our country. We want to have individual level data collection for disease A, B, and C. So the core team, they need to build their skills every year. So but for them to train every year, not just when you are starting. We see that the core team, now the country is more, they are better in DHIS2. They don't need so much help anymore, but they need a little bit help. So now they are better at DHIS2 configuration, training material, everything. But maybe, you know, they're starting with something more advanced. They want to uh, clean up some of the mistakes they did in year one. So everybody, needs help, even very advanced countries. You know, sometimes you get outside help. The hosting costs, it's the same. It's not getting less in year two. You have to pay the same every year or maybe more if inflation is <laughs> going up. Devices, you replace some devices, 25% in, in this country. They know from experience, the, the, the Department of Planning or Infrastructure, they say, we know that a laptop is lasting for X number of years. So you need to plan for that. Connectivity costs, still the same. It's not getting less in year two. You have to pay the same every year or maybe more or maybe less. The core team salaries, it's the same in year two. Maybe more if you have negotiated a pay raise, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you are expanding the team because you need, you see that you need more help. So maybe you need to adjust this as well. You're getting more people on the team, for example. Supervision visits, still the same. You should visit your health facilities, I would say, once a year from the day on data use. Visit them and say, how is it going? Are you collecting? And if you're not visiting everybody, then look at the data quality coming from the different facilities, visit the ones with the most trouble. I don't know. Again, there is no correct answer here. In the assignment, it said that they should get the same one visit each every year. Maybe in your country, you would do a subset and you would target the ones with that has most challenges. I don't know. It's up to you. 
but you should budget and plan for that. So I think with that, we will end this exercise. I hope it was useful to have you uh, think a bit and reflect. And again, there is no two lines under a correct answer here. So don't worry if you don't have exact the same numbers, but I hope you discussed, yes. Uh, thank you. I think we need to add the license and the security certificates also. Yes. So I want to say the example that you have here, it's quite a simplified budget because we don't have so much time. So I just added a few key lines. Um, we have this budget guide that can also help you plan. We did this for, uh, for Ministry of Health in Iraq, Olav and myself, uh, last year. They said, oh, we want this implementation where we want to do a facility level um, data entry. We want four people in every facility to be trained on DHIS2. We want everybody to have devices. Because it sounds very good, right? It, it's what a country with ambition would like to do. So we help them to budget. And you see, oh, like, we will never get this amount of money. So then you need to scale down your implementation plan. And we also calculated how long will it take to train all these end users? If you estimate that a training is three days, uh, you have maybe 20 qualified trainers, they cannot train everybody the same week. So you need to spread it out in time. And then suddenly with the proposed uh, implementation plan there, it would, I can't remember now, but it would take like two years to train everybody. But if you scaled it down to two people per facility to receive training, you could start your project before. Like there are so many considerations you need to think about. So budgeting is also planning. It's not just the numbers. It's also how will you run your project? What kind of project do you want? It's not just the cash. So I hope this was useful. And now I think we have a 15 minute tea break. And we will be back quarter to 11. Thank you. Good work to everybody.